Um, hello, everyone. My name is Richa Bazin. I'm a senior project manager with Fraport. Fraport uh, is the company that owns and manages Frankfurt Airport, and we're also uh, active at other airports internationally. Uh, my main focus is on uh, digitalization projects that are run through our digital factory initiative, uh, which I will be talking about more later. And I'm also happy to share some insights about our baggage handling related project. Um, my presentation is basically divided into two parts. Uh, first, uh, I will give you a general overview of uh, our digitalization and innovation strategy, and then I will move on to talk about the uh, predictive maintenance project that we did at the baggage handling system in Frankfurt. All right, so um, let's start with the first slide. Um, where uh, the next one, please, where uh, I would like to introduce you to our digitalization and innovation strategy, which we also call DAISY. Um, so what you can see on this slide is basically the management summary or really the essence of uh, what this strategy means to us. Um, what we've done with the strategy is we've uh, specified or really um, put into, into writing that um, uh, we regard digitalization and innovation um, as a way to um, really improve our financial performance in the short term, which is not something that we were focused on in the past. So that, that is really a, an important um, point for us here. Um, and to be more specific about this point, um, what, we, what we say with the strategy is that um, we use digital and innovative technologies to increase our competitiveness, reduce costs, and um, yeah, to access additional revenues. What we've also um, put in the strategy is that um, we need to be more focused on our customers needs and embrace new ways of working, for example, like agile, uh, agile ways of working um, to achieve our goals here. Um, and really, overall, what we have put in the strategy is um, the way we want to um, continue our work in the future, the way we want to do or run digital, um, digital projects um, is through the digital factory. Um, the digital factory we have set up sort of as a, an inter internal solution partner to our business units. Um, and we support the business units uh, with the project that we run for them. Uh, so in the end, they uh, can boost their digital transformation, which uh, of course will have uh, an effect on the overall digital maturity of Fraport, which is a major goal for us. And so finally, with the digital, uh, digitalization and innovation strategy, our, our goal or our hope is really that we're able to um, accelerate Fraport's transition from uh, the infrastructure provider that was really the focus in the past to a more service and customer oriented um, airport operator that is able or that is equipped to um, really tackle the challenges of the future. Um, moving on to the next slide, um, to give you some more details about our digital factory, what we've done is um, coming from really known success factors um, that we have gather, gathered from, from other companies, from best cases, um, and building on things like that you really need management commitment, that technology really has to serve a purpose, um, that you know you it is useful to work with agile methods uh, and obviously to be focused on the customer's needs. Coming from that, we have uh, set up the, the factory with two main pillars, which is basically um, the, the area in which uh, the factory um, is active. So the first one is uh, operational excellence where we are looking for digital solutions for our current pain points. And then the second, uh, second one is new business ventures. Um, due to the current corona pandemic, we have decided to not um, look into new business ventures for the moment, but rather focus on the operational excellence um, pillar. Uh, so all our projects that we're running through this digital factory are focused on our current pain points. And to round this whole setup up, we also have our own dedicated portfolio and project management um, for, for the projects that we run through the digital factory. Um, and also maybe to mention, um, obviously, we're not only aware of the success factors that we have uh, to, to have in place for this digital factory to be successful, but we're also aware of, you know, the reasons why other companies maybe failed with initiatives like this, or why digitalization projects don't always work out. So we're also aware of those and obviously try to stay clear of them. Um, moving on to the next slide, um, I can give you some more, some more information on how the digital factory really works, because um, we have uh, created this yeah, sort of standardized um, process that you know, we, we use for all the projects. Um, 
to, to achieve a really fast and iterative um, development uh, for, for uh, the solutions we're looking for. And so the process always starts with the business unit approaching us uh, with, a, with a specific problem that they need a solution for, or um, as we also call them, uh, fields of action, where we look into to, to find our next project. And then um, when we have decided on the project, the first phase is the analysis phase, where we look at the data that is already available to us and try to understand the problem more. And then uh, from that, we head into the development phase, which is um, where we try to develop minimum viable products. And um, this period is no longer than three months. What usually happens in, uh, in this phase is that um, we end up working with startups that are um, sourced through our accelerator um, plug and play. And once we have finished the minimum viable product in these three months, what we do is um, we hand the project or the, the MVP over to the business unit, and then they are in charge of uh, the deployment and the scaling if, of course, the MVP was successful and they are happy with the results. All right, so now that um, I sort of have laid the, the groundwork, I can move on to the specific project uh, regarding baggage handling that we did with our um, uh, baggage handling system at Frankfurt. Um, moving on to the next slide. Uh, the next one, please to uh, introduce you to the package handling system in Frankfurt. Um, first of all, I'd like to give you a short overview. So I have gathered some facts and figures about the system. Um, it has been operating since the 1970s. And actually there are still parts where you can find, you know, the original things that were implemented in, in 1974 and they are still working, which is quite amazing. Um, the total length of the system we have in Frankfurt is 81 kilometers, which I'm told is quite long, and it has the capacity to transport around 20,000 bags per hour, and the bags move at a speed of five meters per second. Um, and to look Look at the more, more technical part or the, the components the um, baggage handling system is made up of. Um, we have, amongst other things, around 20,000 motor and gearbox assemblies. And these motors and gearboxes obviously um, are prone to mechanical or technical failure, which in consequence can cause interruptions. In 2019, when we had 30 million bags uh, run through the system, we saw around 55,000 interruptions. Um, and so uh, we decided that, you know, not all of these interruptions came from the motor, motors and gearboxes, but we decided because a huge chunk uh, does that we're going to focus on, on those for the project and that we're going to um, implement a predictive maintenance solution for these uh, parts. Um, and to round off this, this uh, overview of our baggage handling system, an important uh, KPI that uh, we look at in terms of the baggage handling um, is the baggage connectivity index. And in 2019, that was around 98%, which is quite high. But the hope was that with putting in place a predictive maintenance solution and reducing the number of interruptions, we would be able to um, improve this, this uh, KPI even more. So with the next slide, um, I can give you a brief overview of um, the project. The next slide, please. Right. So as I mentioned, um, when I talked about the digital factory process, we run these uh, projects or the development phase of the MVP in no more than three months. So what you can see here is that we started the project in um, mid-October, mid-end October, and ended it in uh, mid-January. So we were on, right on schedule with this project. And what happened in these three months is that um, at, the, at the beginning, we obviously looked for the right solution provider. And as I mentioned, we uh, especially look at startups through plug and play. And um, through them, we found the startup AI site from Berlin. AI site offers these uh, sensors that monitor the vibrations, the temperature, and also the magnetic field all in one sensor um, with the parts, obviously, that you install the sensors to. 
So we were really um, um, impressed with this, the center and the product that they offered us and were able to um, get all the formalities done quite soon. And then um, moving from that, at the beginning of December, we were able to put in the sensors to the baggage handling system. Uh, obviously, as we're talking about an MVP, we did not install uh, sensors to the whole baggage handling system and not to all those 20,000 motor and gearboxes, but rather we um, had a dedicated area where we put the sensors in. Um, and I'll talk about that a, a bit more with the next slide. But uh, from the timeline, what I can also emphasize is what was really impressive to us is that um, really just a couple of days after the sensors were installed, um, AI site was able to, uh, to provide us with the first data analysis and really uh, show us the, the condition of our, our parts in the baggage handling system that were being monitored by the sensors. Um, and so they were able to do that this, this fast because um, the algorithms um, they have are pre-trained. And so they, they know what regular activity with a certain part looks like. And so that's why um, they were able to deliver um, these, these reports so fast. Moving on to the next slide is where I can give you some more information um, on how many sensors we put in, in, uh, in place. So as I said, we had a dedicated area of the baggage handling system and um, we placed 45 sensors at specific motor and gearboxes that were chosen by the experts um, in this field um, because um, they knew which which um, parts cause most trouble if, if you know, there's a failure and then this leads to an interruption. Um, which uh, was also interesting to know is that um, AI side would send us an alert immediately once uh, the sensors detected an anomaly and the charts um, would look like what you can see here where you can clearly see with the frequency of the of the machine that is being monitored how um, you know the frequency is quite high with the anomaly and then once our maintenance crew has has checked this part they maybe have fixed it or replaced it um, the frequency goes down and everything is, is back to normal again um, and other than these reports, AI site also offers um, their customers the possibility to access a, an online dashboard where customers are able to, um, on a regular basis, look at the conditions uh, of their, of their uh, machines that are being monitored themselves, which is also quite nice. Yeah, and so to um, round up my presentation and to give you some more insights um, on our collaboration with AI site, their technology, and also some more uh, insights into our baggage handling system, uh, we have a video for you, a short video. Um, yeah, and then after that, I'm happy to take uh, any questions you have in the Q&A session.